welcome to the Happy Hormones Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer Self, where we chat all about real life experiences with real women as guest experts and real life solutions to common and not so common struggles that all of us women have, all while keeping it simple. In this podcast, we will be chatting all about hormones and how it relates to everything in women's health, mind, body, soul, fitness, nutrition, relationships, sexual health, and our overall well-being. This really is for the everyday woman, for informing, for community, for inspiration, for uplifting and encouraging messages in all of life's circumstances from A to Z. This is real, raw, and unapologetic talk about what once was taboo and is sensitive to talk about, but I'm going there. And I hope you find yourself and solutions in this journey with me, where my motto is happy mind, happy body, happy hormones, happy life, and to simply be happy. If you like what you hear and want to work with me, go to thehappyhormonescoach.com and send me a message. Now, Let's dive into it. Sit back, relax, grab some tea or coffee, and listen in with me. Hey, welcome back to the Happy Hormones Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Jennifer Self. Um, so this is another bonus episode. I really want to do life coaching episodes on Fridays, so God willing, that's what I will be doing. Um, Today's episode is self-care versus self-sabotage. All right, let's dive into it. Self-care versus self-sabotage. Is there such a thing? Is it the same thing? Can too much self-care become self-sabotage? I've seen these questions and I've asked myself these questions as well over the years. Um, But what prompted me to do this episode today is I seen a post recently asking a question similar to that or to those that I've asked in the past and it prompted me to respond in this way. So this is what I said. That's a great question. I asked myself that last year when I was going overboard in the name of self-care but realized it was self-sabotage because I used it as an excuse not to do what I needed to do, I let myself stay in that mode for longer than I really should have, and it held me back. So I've often reflected back in journals on this and asked myself these questions, as well as I'm sure um, you all have too. And if you followed me or have been following me, then you'll know I am a huge advocate for self-care. And it's a total must in my book. The thing is, like anything, too much of a good thing is just that. It's too much. And then, then it becomes not a good thing. Take, for instance, chocolate banana milkshakes. Okay, maybe that's like not a healthy thing, but it's a good thing. Um, I love those. And in fact, I'm drinking one right now as I'm brainstorming this very episode for you. But every once in a while, as long as it's not overboard and knowing my body and my limits, I listen to that as well as everyone should because we're all different. Anyways, sorry y'all. By now you know me. I tend to trail off and ramble on. Sorry. But so rambling back on to what I was saying chocolate banana milkshakes. Yes, they are good. They are good for my soul. I don't know about you, but they are good for my soul. Um, But too much can become a very bad thing for my body. And that's the same as self-care. Let me explain. A little backstory to my story is, I'm sure you all have heard, I've suffered from anxiety and depression from childhood. I tend to overeat And emotional eating is, or let's just say was, reality for me as a way to cope with it, with everything, or really hiding under my covers and being dead to the world was another thing I did. Those were my things. I went internal either way. I had no idea how to cope in a more positive way, so I did what I knew. I did what I've always done since childhood, that my the part of the brain that keeps you 
quote unquote safe, that's what I did. That's what I learned. That was my learned behavior. And I did those things. It made me feel better. Not saying it was a positive things, but that's what I knew. So I did those. Yeah. And I had no idea how to cope. That's the way I knew how to cope. So I did what I knew, what made me feel better or safe during those attacks. And as I grew and learned more about what self-care looks like and what felt good for me to practice, you know, was I made it a priority or a non-negotiable in my life to intentionally get some minutes in every day to do just that, whatever that looked like. And it helped tremendously with my anxiety, with my depression, and even slowed down for long lengths of time my panic attacks. It was awesome. So on a side note, it's recommended to practice some form of self-care every day. Just make sure you make time for yourself, even if it's just 15 to 20 minutes a day, but there's always time to fill up that cup. Now, I know all you all are busy moms, busy wives. Um, you know, even if you're single, you're still busy. You have a job. I understand that you got to take care of, of the home. You may be a caretaker for somebody else, but either way, there's always time for self-care. I don't care if you have to go to the bathroom and sit there, wherever that may be, for even five minutes alone, just to take time for yourself. I suggest you do that. So flash forward to last year. This is back to my story. 2020. Quarantine happened. Self-isolation happened. And the world kind of just shut down. And in some places, it still is. But thank goodness, not where I'm at. Whew, not where I'm at. It's so nice to go to a gym without a mask. Just saying. Um, and no, I'm not not vaccinated. But it's just nice to be able to go places right now. So anyways, I kind of lost motivation after doing my videos, my posts, and educating myself, etc. Um, for my business or even just for fun on social media and thought, okay, so I know I'm in quarantine, but I need time for myself. So I did what brought me joy each day, but unknowingly it went longer and longer stretches. And before I knew it, I wasn't getting anything done. And I don't mean stretches between days. So I want to clarify, it went longer and longer stretches during the day. So I, I really just wasn't getting anything done. And in the name of self-care, I was training myself unknowingly to do what most of that and let go or make excuses of what I needed to be doing instead. And it got so bad that I was ignoring my household needs, ignoring my husband, my work, and neglecting my dogs. It put me back into depression because although I was doing things for me, I let it by practice habit take over and basically made excuses for why I'm not doing the things I needed to do. And because of that, if not getting things done and allowing myself to really put it honestly, I was sitting on my butt and not doing anything, that I got down and depressed and then really didn't want to do anything at all. Y'all, it was a vicious cycle and one that I shouldn't have allowed in the first place. So talk about healthy boundaries, right? I didn't have one at all then. Um, but what I'm saying is self-care is good. It's needful and it's a must. It's a non-negotiable in everybody's life from childhood to adulthood. It's a non-negotiable. And putting yourself first is not selfish. But also, it's not an excuse either to not do things that need to be done, like certain responsibilities that you have. Because once you do, then it becomes self-sabotage. And from personal experience, as I've shared more than once, I know it firsthand, and it wasn't isolated just from last year's story that was shared. It was more times than, honestly, than I care to admit. I'm going to end this by having you ask yourself, do you practice self-care? And if so, how? How often? And if you don't, then why not start? But if you do, just make sure you are filling up your cup full and also filling up others. 
It's a self-disciplined balance, but with practice, it becomes a habit, and a habit after doing it for so long becomes a lifestyle. So I hope this blessed you and gave you something to think about. Hope to see you on the next Wednesday's episode as we continue our series on Frequently Asked Questions, Happy Hormones Edition. Hey, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I loved making it. Remember to subscribe. Oh, and sharing is caring. So if you know that woman who could benefit from this, please share and leave a review. It would mean the world to me to get this message out and start changing women's lives like never before. Interested in how you can work with me directly? Go to the happyhormonescoach.com and send me a message. I can't wait to hear from you. As always, be simply happy and have a happy mind, happy body, happy hormones, and happy life.